Hi everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online and yes this is Legacy of Romulus and this looks slick, really does look slick. It's like the idea of creating a Romulan, like the idea of my ship being there and it's quite cool they're showing all my bridge officers as well. Anyway let's get going. Can't wait to play this because it was a five and a half gig download, something along those lines absolutely enormous download so uh, but it's been on triple testing for some time so hoping that everything goes okay with it uh, well we're still kind of waiting for something that's going on here anyway I'm quite excited about this and it has uh, made me think about doing a few extra things with this LP but I'll leave those for a little bit later in the episode we're just waiting for this to load up screw you cryptic Anyway, here we are a day later, back in the uh, back in the game, and it looks like everything's finally been fixed. And here's the new interface for uh, Legacy of Romulus. Looks a lot more colourful than the old one. Things are labelled kind of as they should be red for tactical. For whoa, nice view screen. I quite like the idea of that. That looks pretty good. Unfortunately, it did cause me to crash into Deep Space Nine, but. While I'm around, let's have a look. Yeah, can't say I hate the new HUD that much, but we do have a new thing here, and that's traits. Now, obviously, in the original game where you were selecting a character, you selected two traits, or you selected your species, and you got traits that uh, you just got. So, humans have leadership, which is subsystem repair and hull regeneration rate in space and increase team exploit damage on the ground however you get to choose two additional ones and I chose accurate and lucky so they both uh, correspond to pretty much increased critical hit chance uh, because if you're accurate you get a bonus to accuracy obviously, and any overflow from accuracy goes towards your critical hit chance so combining that with lucky I've just got an even bigger critical hit chance and now you can see why I use anti-proton weapons on my ship um, still looking to increase to the Mark 12 fleet anti-proton weapons followed by the Romulan disruptors but we'll see what the Romulan um, side of the game coaches up. I'm definitely going to create both a Klingon and a Romulan character now and we'll probably go through uh, the game LPing them from the Klingon side as well uh, saying something that I'm going to add on to this LP um, I think that just for completeness sake I'll probably do the Federation campaign as well I will certainly do the featured episodes so this is going to go on for a long period of time I'm hoping here so we've got six uh, extra traits we can add. I'm mainly adding space ones. I don't do exotic damage at the moment because I'm in a cruise and I don't use things like gravity well or anything like that to do exotic damage. So I'm not really too bothered about astrophysicist or conservation of energy. I do get a free respec token on that side so I very well may respec in the future if I move on something like a Vesta science vessel or something along those lines. But for the moment I'm just going for elusive which is really weird because you you know my ship moves incredibly slowly I can't believe anyone would actually miss it but we're going to assume that those sort of things happen and I'm gonna go for creative because I have damaging kit powers like uh, the uh, radiation spam and the exothermic sort of blowing stuff up and setting it on fire thing that I have can you tell I don't play the ground game that much in this game Oh, I just remembered, if I'm going to go through the campaign, I'm going to have to play the ground game a lot, aren't I? Uh, well, I suppose uh, things can only get better. Uh, so, basically, I'm going to create a Romulan, and I am going to create a Klingon. I would like your sort of ideas as to how you'd like me to proceed with those characters, or from either a science, an engineer, a tactical, however you want me to do that. Mainly the reason for this is because the Klingon campaign is now complete, 1 to 50, rather than 25 to 50, and I believe Romulans are 1 to 40 at the moment, but I definitely want to do their storyline. Anyway, now that I've set my traits, I'm going to head back into space and we're going to come across this brand new mission that we have. It's Secrets of Nimbus. 
and we get to transport for free so let's do that and those of you who are more up on Star Trek canon might recognize Nimbus 3 as the planet of I believe it was the planet of universal peace or something along those lines that was in Star Trek 5 pretty much universally accredited as the worst Star Trek movie of all time although I think that that honor might be shared with the first movie um, generally they were both pretty bad um, but they have uh, shown as the planet this time and uh, after I've just rejigged my HUD a little bit there we are going to beam down oh cinematic must be important and the uh, paradise lost that just doesn't sound good at all let's see how things uh, are really going on the ground for those who want a little bit of backstory apparently the Orion syndicate has come to power on the planet so we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, stop them from interfering in everything. That's going to be easier said than done of course because it's not like the Orion Syndicate are known for listening to people when they, uh, when they get asked to behave nicely. They generally end up sort of uh, doing things horses head in bed style. Oh, we've got this fine looking chap called Horace Jones and he is basically telling us yeah, missing travellers. A little bit more backstory for you. Apparently the Orion Syndicate is trying to get a hold of um, Thaleron uh, weapons. Or at least the triggers for Thaleron weapons. I don't think that you need telling that that would be an insanely bad thing. Uh, Thaleron weapons from Star Trek Nemesis and they have the capability of pretty much melting all organic life. You do see them in Star Trek Online, in fact you'll see them when I do the STFs in a little bit. Um, certainly on one of them, and I suppose with the Romulans... Shut up! And I suppose with the Romulans being a big part of the game now, they will probably have Thaleron uh, technology at some point. Sorry, just had to do a quick cut there to fix my sound. If you need it, I've got it. I wish I didn't fix my sound now. Anyway, Lost City of Paradise here. Okay, so it looks like we have to go into the local bar, and apparently, uh, de assimilated bogs are now uh, taking up careers as bartenders. I really wish you wouldn't say that all the time. Anyway, so let's head off into the bar. Uh, maybe this would have been a good career choice for Seven of Nine. I don't know where she is in the storyline at the moment. I think she's, uh, I think she's at the Daystrom Institute somewhere like that. Maybe she's uh, definitely not. Uh, she's definitely not affiliated with Starfleet anymore. Dance coordinator, really? Uh, wow, really. <laughs> No, I'm really not going to do this on camera now, but that's quite funny. Yeah, I probably am going to end up doing that at some point, aren't I? Anyway, it looks like we've found our Borg. So, let's have a chat to him and see what he comes up with. Miserable sod. I mean, said that, though, I'd be pretty... Uh, I'd be pretty miffed if I was an ex bog as well, to tell you the truth. So they're outside of town. Hmm. Wow, he cut me off. I'm going to talk to you again. You don't cut me don't off. Well, if you don't want trouble, you'll tell me what I need to know. So he seems to have seen a few people, and uh, he's looking, yeah, he's telling us about the desert, so I suppose we're going to have a look. Wow, that was uh, interesting. We'll make an example out of all of you. I think that that might be a bug. I think that the, that should have started maybe a bar fight or something like that, but nothing's come up on my... Uh, sort of showdown thing so yeah I'm really sort of confused about what's happening there but anyway we are off out into the desert and hey look my away team reappeared 
Oh, I see. Are they over there? Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to take on the uh, pillagers here. Now, this mission is meant to be... That was quite good. <laughs> this mission is supposed to be taken on by characters who are lower level than me, I believe. So, nothing here really is a threat. And, like, myself and my team are going to take these guys down really easily. Hey, we got an expose attack. That's really good. Is it really worth setting, like, everything on fire like has been done here? Oh, great. It's an ambush. It's a trap. Who'd have thought? For those of you who've played this game all the way through, you'll pretty much be aware that just about everything in the game is a trap, so don't worry about it. You'll see my Jamhadar combat suit trigger there. I uh, gained a shroud. Uh, I think that, ha that has a chance of uh, triggering whenever I get hit. And yeah, I'm being really lazy with the combat here. I'm just literally just standing and delivering, which if you're a uh, good enough, uh, high enough level, you pretty much can do just constantly. Jeez, everyone in the entire world decided to kill that guy at that time, it looks like. Okay, so it looks like we accomplished a side mission there, and I'm just deciding to leave that lockbox there, apparently. That is one of the new lockboxes as well. The Dominion lockbox has been removed. I think I have about a hundred in storage somewhere. And uh, Scorpions, that's not good. And the Dominion lockbox has been uh, replaced with the Tal Shiar lockbox. So I wonder what we'll get in those. I'll open a few on camera just so that people can see. Throwing away energy credits so that you guys can uh, experience the game. Big old scorpion coming along there, but yeah, these guys just aren't a threat either. My guy's laying chronoton mines all over the place. I hope that uh, hope that no civilian walks over those. Well, there's one thing that's in the box. Obviously, a Tal Shiar adapted destroyer. That might be the uh, that might be the top thing in the box actually because that's usually the message that comes across the screen when the uh, the rarest thing in the box gets opened. Anyway, we've got to investigate these weapon fragments, so I suppose we have to uh, see. When it says scan remains, there, I thought that these were the remains of some poor soul who ended up fighting against the scorpions, but obviously not. So. Don't know how good that destroyer will be. It's usually a tactical ship of some description. Although, no, I'm lying completely there, because in the last lot box it was a Jamhadar Dreadnought, so I suppose that could be considered a cruiser. And before that we had the Temporal Science Vessel, so yeah, this is the first escort for a while. Although we did recently have the uh, Jamhadar attack ship thing, which I didn't manage to get, so I'm upset about that have to somehow find a way to earn 400 million energy credits or something if I want one. The barkeep must have known they wouldn't make it out. That's a bit of a uh, that's a bit of a leap to make, but I suppose we'll go with it for now. Uh, just looking round, more scorpions. Oh, they're sitting they're like round a bunch of klingons. Apparently scorpions now take hostages. No, I have no idea either, but never mind. If we go take these out. But one thing that will always be the same on Star Trek Online, as, as least as long as I'm playing it, is stuff gets set on fire. Whether it's in space, whether it's on the ground, it's getting set on fire. And this is the last weapon fragment. But I suppose we're going to... Uh, kill these scorpions first. We're setting the hostages on fire, of course, at the same time, but never mind. And here's the final weapon fragment. Got that, and now I've just got to rescue these prisoners. Quantum mortars. Oh, obviously one of my bridge officers must have triggered their beam the Klingons to sick bay. And of course they're going to bitch about it because the Klingons still don't like us. We are still at war at this point officially, but uh, given the events of the game, the Klingon war has kind of taken a little bit of a back step. But we will go through all that because, as I've said, I have decided to play through pretty much the full campaign. So we are going to uh, 
we are going to experience as much as possible. A giant scorpion has been sighted in the area. It can't be. That's a big boy. Okay, so before we head back to Paradise City, I'm going to shoot up this big scorpion. Dampening field it, set it on fire, give it some radiation poisoning. All these good things. <laughs> Plasma grenade in there as well, just to finish it off. I think the... Uh, I think the way rewards are coming up is actually not that bad either. I do like this new interface for the moment. I also like this where you can beam back into Paradise City. I think that's a really nice addition to the game and they should keep that. And hopefully uh, change some other missions to avoid running backwards and forwards constantly. But so far, yeah, I've got to say I kind of like what I've seen from Legacy of Romulus. Uh, obviously the big testing point is the Romulan campaign, but... Uh, we're going to have to wait for that for a little bit. I'm not too sure what you guys would like to see first. I mean, obviously, there's quite a bit of Federation Endgame that I want to do as well at the moment. I want to do the... Uh, oh, he. we're not happy at you, but... Uh, I guess he... Uh, I guess it's an efficient way of finding out who's willing to uh, take on the Syndicate, I suppose. But really, it's up to you guys. I want to obviously do the Federation uh, Endgame, so that would be the STFs, but I can kind of do those any time. Uh, it's a case of, do you want to see me go through the Fed campaign, the Klingon campaign, or the Romulan campaign first? Personally, because the expansion has come out, I'm actually leaning towards Romulan campaign first. Um, but it's really what you guys want to see, so I will... Uh, I might leave the STO. What I might do is do the finish this campaign that I'm doing now, which is the Federation one, and um, I will then probably do the STFs. And in that time, there'll be enough sort of feedback to let me know which campaign I should go down because the STFs are the same from pretty much each campaign. So uh, you know, it's really up to you what you want to. Uh, it's really up to uh, you which way you want to approach them after that. But I think that. I'm personally leaning towards Romulan campaign. Okay, so we have to go back outside. Oh no, we don't. We have to find uh, we have to find Law's house here. He has been named Law because apparently he is the Law, and not L O R E as well in terms of uh, Data's sort of psychotically evil android brother. I can see why this was called the planet of galactic peace yeesh it's like why would anyone want to come here like really can't you terraform the planet to be something like half decent or something uh, oh yeah console here we go let's have a chat with law then people who stand up just get knocked down <laughs> Giving it plenty, as a lot of these characters in the game seem to be. Getting a pretty overtly hostile uh, reception from these guys, really. Yep, and we're just getting confirmation from him that the Orion Syndicate basically hasn't been taking prisoners whatsoever as far as this planet goes. Well, they kind of have been taking pl prisoners, but they've been uh, being exceedingly aggressive, shall we say, towards the population. And just sending their usual message that you don't cross as otherwise you pay the price. So with that, now well, let's ask him about these Thalaron triggers. Surely uh, he knows something about it, or at least you'd hope he would. Come on. There we go. But, of course, he's not going to talk to us because he, Orion Syndicate, are going to sort of kill him. Yeah, we do have quite a fancy starship. I do like my starship. And they're using Norsican and Gorn. So it's basically the allies of the Klingons who are involved in this. So I suppose we have to go on out into the desert and find out what's going on. And it says here, scan old consoles or defeat sandworms to recover Norsican information. So I'll meet you when we're out there. 
And yeah, they really weren't kidding here, were they? Worm Central, but they don't move and they're pretty weak. You can see they're five levels below me, so I'm really not bothered. Although laying Chronoton Mines seems suboptimal against a race that doesn't move. Now, I'm not the only one here. There are uh, several other captains with their crews here, so I don't imagine this... Uh, the only problem we might have is not having enough worms to... Right, and... Oh... A queen has appeared, eh? Well, let's have a look here. I don't like really big worms. Is that it? No. Well, apparently she's appeared in the ruins, so let's see. Oh, there she is, right in the background there. That's a big old worm. Hang on. Oh, there she is. Yep. Well, I'm just going to fight my way through to her, and... Uh, it looks like someone's already taking. Uh, looks like someone's already taking her. But there's a lot of uh, stuff coming my way here, and I'm not too sure where it's coming from. That might be the queen blobbing that, but I honestly don't know. But either way, we're just going to take out all these worms. And to be honest, this fight really isn't. Uh, this fight really isn't up to much. Uh, someone else is currently working on the queen. As you can see, I can stand in that stuff and it's not doing me too much damage. So, overall, I'm not really too concerned about where this is going. I'm going to take out this elder. Yep, he's dead. And the queen has died over there, so we never even really got to fight it. Uh, what we're looking for here... Yep, there you go. You can see a console over there where we can download information. And we'll just see what percentage that gives us. Four. Great. I think I'll just take on worms. So, the rest of the fights are pretty much the same. That cream won't reappear, so I'll meet you once we're uh, pretty much done. And here we are. We're just about to finish them off. We should go back to the bar and decrypt the information on their computer. Of course, we can't just use the Sathanasis computer for this, can we? We have to head all the way back. But fortunately, we've got the uh, special beam that we have here that we can just beam back into the city. I know it's a slight difference between this loading screen and the uh, one that you might be used to. I want to have the captions come back up, though. I'm not sure why they haven't. Rescue the Nemosia hostages. Do we have to go back there or something? Well... I'm going to head back into the bar because that's where we're supposed to go, I believe. I think this might be where that fight that should have kicked off earlier is about to kick off. Uh, nope, that's a GPL conversion unit, so that doesn't help. Uh, just show this off for you guys who don't know. This is a gold press latinum conversion. A uh, place where you can buy some pretty cool stuff with it, but none of it's really that, uh, none of it's really that useful, and it's why I don't really, uh, I don't go around grinding go gold press latinum. As you can see, finally we've got the uh, Orion pirate thing. So it looks like someone else is doing that outside. So, you know, you tell me what's going on there. But never mind. Maybe I broke the mission by doing something in the wrong order or something. Anyway, now it's activated the computer back here, so we can sort this out. And this is just going to be a really simple math quiz here. So it's a, the access code has a key that includes a mathematical flow. If you can set the first two digits to add up to the third digit and the second and third to add up to the fourth, it should be able to trip the algorithm. So for those of you who can do very, very basic maths, the answers are obviously 10 for the first number and 15 for the third number. So we're going to plop those in and uh, make sure that we can continue. So I decided to go for the third number first for no reason whatsoever, but never mind. And there we go, 10. So we are correct and the blind man sees all is the message so maybe Horace can sort this out but that is the end of the Lost City of Paradise mission and I think that I'm going to keep it to one mission per video otherwise I'm going to be having hour long videos and he can talk to us across the square apparently and now he believes that we might just have the power to attack the syndicate but obviously he's fearful that uh, 
he's fearful that we've kind of helped him here, so it sort of makes things look like he's gone wrong. Apparently he's got it, and he does have a fleet uh, duty officer for us. Anyway, see you next time, guys.